In terms of the inflation question then, we're looking ahead to that data out tomorrow. What is the trajectory in your mind for those factory gate prices? Are we looking at a sustained pickup of above 8%? Yeah, I think so. I think that the, you look at the uh, commodity price keeps going up, mm. and uh, and I, I think that in, inside China, food prices still is on uh, on, on the upward trend. Mm. Uh, and uh, the and uh, uh, there's labor shortage in China everywhere, uh, so it's a really overheating situation, and uh, so much monetary stimulus still in the pipeline. I think inflation is a very serious problem. Okay, and if you're sitting in Zhongnanhai, the view is that. A pickup, a sharp pickup in consumer prices will be a point of concern. Are we seeing that pass through? Do you expect that to be passed through from the factory gate to consumer prices that, to this point, have remained relatively subdued? Oh, uh, we, we're seeing quite a bit of pass, uh, pass through already. Mm. And if you look at food prices being uh, uh, being up and up, and you look at uh, like a, a gasoline price, obviously the response to uh, oil price. So I, I think we do see uh, pass through. I think the Chinese government, when it uh, looks at a situation like that, they tend to go to uh, psychological uh, management uh, you know, in terms of uh, how to tell the people what's going on. Um, I think that uh, the, the issue is, uh, is inflation is here to stay. So you, you can persuade people to, to not to worry for the time being, but over, over time, before the end of the year, uh, the psychology could become a problem. Okay, so there's the psychology and then there's potentially the tipping point then where the PBOC has to move away from its reiteration that there will be no sharp turns in policy. What is the data point, what is the number, what is the inflection point that could force that change and more aggressive tightening? They don't look at numbers, they really look at the social uh, uh, stability. Mm. Uh, China is facing a situation like uh, uh, Japan did uh, uh, when the Plaza Accord happened. It's basically uh, Chinese uh, trade surplus is uh, surging this year and could uh, like uh, reach a trillion dollars in a year or two. Uh, and uh, the currency is under tremendous appreciation pressure. And if you do keep the currency down, you have a, a lot of uh, inflation pressure. So, uh, uh, but the government does not want to appreciate the currency. That's the, the key thing. You, you're not, your monetary policy cannot be normal. If you if you're artificially suppressing your exchange rate, so I think that's the issue. Is that when you do what Japan did in 1985, let the currency go. And Andy, I guess then to your point, do you think then the currency should be where? Should it be higher or, or lower than the current level? Because if you bring in the inflation story, they should actually make it stronger. Well, uh, the currency should be much much higher than where where uh, where it is now. Okay. Uh, you look at the, the, uh, the trade surplus, uh, China's market share in the world has really gained. The, pandem the pandemic has weakened China's competitive competitiveness by a few years. So China's international trade position, uh, competitiveness position is, has strengthened tremendously. So the currency has to reflect that. But the government doesn't want, want to do that, so we, we have a dilemma. Okay, and to your point then that you think three decades of disinflation is over, is that, are you referring to China or is that going to be a global problem? It's a global problem. The key is, uh, the bottom line is China's uh, labor market. Uh, the labor shortage is very serious. So obviously it's not like in the past, the monetary uh, stimulus doesn't have consequences because uh, the oversupply of labor will keep, uh, uh, keep inflation down. It's not the case anymore, and uh, blue-collar blue -collar wage in China uh, is, is surging. It's, it's really uh, uh, increasing at a very fast pace. So inflation and the rising wage rate, then on top we have a rising commodity price. Uh, the, this kind of spiral is, is here to stay. To, to uh, break that, China has to really to adjust its monetary policy. Its monetary policy uh, is, uh, is for deflation error. A fixed exchange rate, very low interest rate, and uh, and a quantitative easing basically in terms of a credit uh, creation. So I think this is where uh, uh, where, what it, the problem China is facing. So what's the solution then? I mean, yeah, fixing monetary policy that's the prescription, but what, what what's the tangible solution? China has to flow to the exchange rate and normalize the, uh, the monetary policy mm. uh, to become a normal economy. Mm. So it's not like an oversupply of labor, it's a, uh, it's a permanent uh, stimulus situation, quantity easing forever. Uh, it's not that anymore. You, you, have to, you have to accept the reality and become a normal economy.
OK, Andy, I want to kind of step back a little bit and get your views on the macroeconomic picture in China. And in terms of that key pillar of growth, the consumer, which all the data suggests is not back to pre-pandemic levels, what are you seeing there? When do you think consumption is going to be back to those levels? How important is it? What is the time frame? Well, it's back to this, uh, the economy, uh, the system is not normal, you know, it's, uh, uh, you will have an undervalued exchange rate, we have monetary inflation, then the government uh, channels that money into the property market, creating a very massive property bubble, and the government takes 10% of GDP out of this property bubble every year. It's basically the benefit to the government. Uh, the cost is not uh, felt by anybody because it's like in the price. Uh, price is going up. It's like everybody is gaining something, right? So, uh, so that 10 uh, percent taken away is suppressing consumption because its disposable income is is reduced, and uh, and also uh, chasing the property bubble has led to rising household debt. Now it's over 100 percent. It's it's uh, roughly about uh, 100. I would say 140 to 50 percent of uh, disposable income. So the, the, that pressure is really weighing down uh, the consumption. So uh, China is uh, where we are is really coming down to this uh, problem of uh, monetary policy. It's a fixed exchange rate uh, and uh, the, the credit creation like a quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. And to fund the government investment, yeah. and taking the inflation pressure away by uh, channeling money into the property market to create this bubble. So property inflation, uh, not much consuming inflation. Mm -hmm. So we have a suppressed consumption. 